It's uh, now my honor to introduce our guest speaker for this 137th Peabody Conservatory commencement and recipient of the George Peabody Medal, the highest honor bestowed by the Peabody Institute. Tori Amos, if you would please join me at the podium. read the citation. Tori Amos, you are among the most influential solo artists of your generation, beloved by millions of your emotionally honest, narratively complex, and unapologetically unconventional songs. A singer-songwriter, pianist, composer, and eight-time Grammy Award nominee, you began your study of music here at the Peabody Preparatory. You were performing professionally under your father's guidance by the age of 13, playing for lobbyists and politicians in a Washington, D.C. piano bar. From your 1992 breakthrough album, Little Earthquakes, to 2017's Native Invader, you have maintained a distinctly personal voice and achieved uncommon recording industry success with seven of your first of your 15 commercial albums debuting in the top 10 of the Billboard 200. Written on themes of feminism, family, sexuality, politics, and religion, your string of chart-topping singles has included inspiring and personal songs like Crucify, Silent All These Years, and A Sort of Fairy Tale. On your recordings and in live shows, you play not just piano, but also harpsichord, harmonium, clavichord, Hammond B3 organs, a Rhodes piano, and electronic keyboards. Devoted to your fans, you have performed more than 1,000 shows since your first world tour in 1992, and in 2003 were voted fifth best touring act by the readers of Rolling Stone magazine. During your most recent journey in the world of classical music, you worked with the German musicologist Alexander Burr on your 2012 album, Night of the Hunters, which pays tribute to composers such as Bach and Chopin, Bartok and Debussy, and which won an Echo Classic Award. Your stage musical, The Light Princess, an adaption of the George MacDonald fairy tale, premiered at the London's Royal National Theatre in 2013 and was nominated for Best Musical at the Evening Standard Awards. You and your music have inspired many official and unofficial books in addition to your 2005 autobiography. In the Eisner and, Har and Harvey Award-winning anthology graphic novel, Comic Book Tattoo, each of the stories is based on one of your songs. A longtime advocate for victims of sexual assault, you were the first spokesperson for the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, RAIN. Your semi-autobiographical 1991 song, Me and a Gun, has become something of an anthem for the Me Too movement, and you continue your involvement with RAIN as a member of the National Leadership Council. Tori Amos, you have followed the muses and charted your own course to the pinnacle of success, speaking your truth and attracting an ever larger following with every lyric. With this award, we celebrate your singular career and outsized impact. I am proud to bestow on you today the highest honor conferred by the Peabody Institute of the Johns Hopkins University, the George Peabody Medal for Outstanding Contributions to Music in America. get a medal for crashing and burning because um, I fail a lot and that's okay. I have hundreds of songs in the music graveyard and some of them should stay there forever. <laughs> I write songs about politicians in Washington now daily. Um, my latest is called Long and Hard. I'll let you think about who that's about. Um, Lindsey Graham. And so, um, but some of these songs should stay. Um, pertaining to FISA. Uh, some of them should really not ever be published, and that's okay. I want to talk to you about possibilities for you. I want you to think about Netflix. I want you to think about Amazon. I want you to think about Apple. And what are they doing? They're making shows. And have you heard some of those scores? Some of them suck. <laughs> 
Now, Fred has told me you are at the top of your game. Your bar is high. Don't let that bar slide. I work with some of the pros. Some are great. Some have let that bar slide because they're running out to the pub instead of keeping the bar high, okay? I hire orchestras and I have a hard time finding the players who can play the music. Do you know why the scores aren't very interesting in television? Not all, some, some are good. Some are very good, some are not. Because they don't have the imagination. So budding composers, maybe you haven't found your true north yet. It took me a while to find my true north. It really, really did as a writer. And once I did, I thought, I need to be a producer. That's a bit of a problem because as a writer, I'm an introvert. I'm terrified. I write in the dark for a long, long period of time. Sometimes it takes me years to write a song. So I had to develop a skill set, which you all can do. This is an amazing time for you to experiment. I mean, maybe one of you has a passion for, I don't know, bluegrass. So you're a bassoonist. You can work it out. <laughs> there are possibilities, but you have to have, you have the skill set. Now you need the imagination and you need the bollocks. Bulls, balls. You need the stomach for this. I'm going to tell you one story and then I know lunch is calling and all your amazing achievements need to be honored. So I just wish somebody had told me this about scenarios when things go wrong. Guys, things will go wrong. That's okay. But it's how you handle it. And if you put your head in the sand and just say, it'll be fine. Okay, that's one of my crash and burn moments. And I've had more than one. So as a producer, I got some advice and I developed with the muses they taught me um, to put a protocol in place. So this is a sonic safety net. And as a producer, think about this. If you guys are just hired guns, that's kind of glamorous and sexy. You go in, you play, you play the notes, you take your paycheck. You don't have the responsibility. But if you want the responsibility to see it through, then that's a different skill set. Are any of you arrangers in this room? Okay. So I broke my rules. I broke the rules of the sonic safety net that the muses had taught me to put in place. The first rule is check your tuning. You have no idea how many times during a recording session, if I'm not checking that tuning every 15 minutes, in post, I'm spending weeks in post with a Pro Tool operator at 700 bucks a day, fixing the fucking bass player. <laughs> okay? Now, this is one of the greatest mistakes I've ever made and I hope you, it's gonna be so obvious to you, you're gonna look at me and say, how stupid. But I was intimidated. Because sometimes, guys, you will be intimidated by people who have a pedigree and are famous, but their bar isn't as high as yours. I want you to remember that because they have their boats. Some of them keep their bar high and they have their lifestyle, but some of them don't. So you need to think about who you serve. What is your intention as a musician? Because it is seductive. Success can be very seductive and that bar can slip. So, the record company suggested, this is quite a while ago, but I'd sold a few million records, so I had a little bit of a pedigree, but I was intimidated. And so, the record company said, I want you to work with this arranger. Okay. I said, okay. And then I was told the rules would be, but you don't get to hear the arrangement till the string day, the orchestral day with the full orchestra. And I was very nervous and I said, I was a young producer, that breaks my rules. The rules the muses have set out, if we're collaborating and we're 
trusting and we're confident in our music, then we share. And then I can make my changes. Changes. The artist makes changes. Well, the producer, yeah, the producer, that's part of her job, is to make the changes if they're not right. Because the arrangements have to tell the story that the song is telling, not your own fucking crazy made up story. You're underscoring or write your own song. Okay, that's how it works. So what happened? I broke my rule. Let's walk to the day, the orchestral day. They're all there, they've warmed up. Now you have to understand this type of session can buy you, cost you a small house. Maybe not in Montgomery County, but it will cost you a house. So it's, it, the stakes are high, very high here. Okay, they're playing the first song. And I said to the guys, my, my team in the room, is that um, and they said, well, they said it's mm -hmm. So I get on the talk back and I say, excuse me, sir, um, what's, what's, what song are you playing? We have a little hiccup here in, in the control room. He said, we're playing. <laughs> and I thought, Jesus Christ. Okay, one down. One, okay, crash and burn on one. We got three more. Six hours later, it went from bad to worse. So I, I'm sure you all are ahead of this story. You understand, don't you, what happens now? What happens now is I've just blown this budget because I broke my rule. No, I didn't approve the arrangements, but by default, I did. Somebody said, let's call the record company. Oh, no, 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 no. We do anything with that. We can't do that. Because they're bean counters. It's called the music business. Half of them are tone deaf. They're good at, at number crunching. So they'll either say, we put it out as it is. End of career. You would look at me and say, how could you approve that? You've lost your mind. No, I lost my courage. So at the end of it, I called in a musician that I trusted. And I said, tell me, tell me where we stand. He said, if you let this out, it's over. You will have lost your mind and the respect of any musician. And so I said, get me a shot of tequila. <laughs> Lock this door. And anybody who doesn't have the stomach for this leave before I lock it. I take full responsibility. It wasn't the orchestra's fault. It was my fault. Red light, on. Save the piano vocals, make a copy just in case. Even the timpani, erase. Erase four arrangements. Did I catch flack? The doo-doo was heavy. It was huge. But I had to stand my ground. And so the solution then was, you know what? You're difficult, not pedantic. Men are pedantic when they're producers. Women are difficult. So they said, why don't we bring a professional man in to sort this out? And I said, not another goddamn man. I need musicians who will follow the code and arrangers who will collaborate. Not with their ego, but with their commitment to the muses and to telling the story. And this is the code that I have. If I cannot compose for you what you need, I need to step back and hand the baton over to someone who can. Because that is the integrity of musicians that I am a part of. Join me. And boy, the fun is just beginning. Congratulations. <laughs>